Good day, folks. Welcome back to another time video. Um, been a little while. We've been super busy um, filling orders over the winter here. And uh, with the warmer weather, spring is seems to be approaching quickly. I'm crossing my fingers. Never know. Maybe it gets cold again. Who knows? But uh, anyhow, I posted this uh, pattern on Instagram this week and had a ton of requests on a tutorial video so here we are um i'm filming a few different videos today so um i'll put those out over the next uh kind of week or two and then uh hopefully you guys enjoy them so this is kind of a mix between a newer uh school pattern and an old school pattern and um i've got a size 14 uh, Daiichi 1760 in the vise and a 332 uh, brown bead and the old school is kind of the thorax area of this pattern and the new school is the body so it's a neat combo um, just gives the fish a little something different to look at um, so if you're fishing pressured water or clear water anything like that this can be a, a pretty good pattern um, so tie the body however you like um, you probably if you've seen the photo i used a bright orange bead and that's more hot spot style um, kaboom in their face this one i'm using the brown bead which is a more natural representation of the um, gills so I'm just going to capture some white ostrich uh, right up top here. And then I will just give two or three turns of this right up front here. And then get a hold of that. Secure it. If you pull down on your thread and just give a yank, it'll usually break away clean. This stem's a little thicker, so I'll have to get in there and do that, um, which is okay. So then I'm just going to kind of pull all this forward and just scooch my thread right underneath. Um, <clears throat> and then actually you can turn this over. You don't need much of this ostrich underneath. So the bead's going to cover up the majority of that. And then if I flip it over... You can see now most of that ostrich is up top. Um, <clears throat> so from there, I've got a turkey feather. And you can use pheasant tail for this. Um, you could use uh, like mallard or just about any kind of natural um, fiber. And you want to get enough of these fibers just to cover the top of the bead. Um, if you don't have natural feathers, then just grab a piece of scud back or something like that that you can cut to length. <clears throat> and um, I'm just going to try to tie this on top nice and centered if I can. So I'll just tie it in and then pull it back and make sure it's the way I want it. That looks okay. Trim this out. And then I am going to build this up just a wee bit. And that's just to stop the bead from going too far forward. I don't want it shoving those gills too, too much. Um, so I'll build this up as a little stopper for that. And then come in and just whip finish right there. So we've built our thorax up. Now I can get rid of that thread, toss this bead up, and you can see that dam allows me just to kind of wedge that bead about as far forward as I'd like. And I think I'll leave her right there. That looks pretty good. So now retie in just below where you left off and you can see you've already got your taper kind of started when you do that. So <clears throat> I will 
build this up just a little bit. And then trim out this excess. Next, I'm going to grab some copper brown wire. <clears throat> We're doing kind of a dirty olive version of this. I did a brown olive um, in the pattern I posted, but this one utilizes a little bit more material. So I will grab that wire right in behind the bead and then just wrap it back along the shank and then leave it right about where that barb hangs down. Now I'm going to grab just a single strand of um, buzzer wrap and this is the olive color. I'll capture that right at the very back there and start to come back up with nice touching wraps. You may have noticed when I went to grab that buzzer wrap, when I dropped my, my um, bobbin, I spun it counterclockwise. And that's kind of a habit that I have just from tying so many of these things that typically when I let it go, I'll, I'll give it a spin and um, it just keeps that thread nice and flat. So if you get into that habit, then uh, it just speeds up the tying a little bit because you're not uh, not too worried about the um, having to sit here and wait for that thing to unwind. So now we'll just grab our buzzer wrap and you only want a single strand of this and you don't want to overlap it too much. We want the rusty brown to kind of show through and that's where the dirty olive side of it comes in. So I'll just wrap this up. Buzzer wrap is awesome stuff. Super realistic looking and very, very thin, which is what I like. It's probably one of my favorite chronomid materials. <clears throat> and then this part, um, you can do this kind of now. You can do it actually before you even tie your wire in very first. Um, but I'm just gonna pull this over before I do the wire and just cover that right on top and just a couple of wraps and then get in there as close as you can and nip that out. If you've got a little tag there, it's totally okay. And I will show you why in just a second. But now you can see the kind of cool effect you have with that thorax style. Super, super neat. And then just tuck my wire in below and then just give this body some segmentation. So six or seven wraps. Don't get caught up on how many you got there. Doesn't matter too much. And then I'll just helicopter this out. And uh, we're just about there. So, um, you don't see me use resin very often. I'm a bit of a crazy glue guy. But you will hear me say that when I want an underbody to show through, um, I like the fact that resin kind of magnifies it, the underbody. And so this here is going to help that rust brown show through just a little bit. So um, I'll just give this a thin coat. Kind of like so, that looks not bad. And then I'll just give it a zap. One more step after this. Stuff doesn't cure super quick, but it's not terrible, so 
I'll call that good for video purposes. Now I'm going to grab a strand of peacock curl. Um, you can use dyed orange. The dyed stuff doesn't seem to have the the fibers that the natural stuff, the undyed stuff does. I don't know if they shrink in the dyeing process or what the deal is there, but um, this one I've got just a piece of natural. And I'm just going to wrap this maybe three or four wraps. That looks good enough there. And then I'll capture this curl, pull, and just nip away. Now what I'm going to do is actually spin my bobbin clockwise to cord it up. And I just do that because it allows me to kind of sneak a whip finish in behind there um, with a super thin diameter instead of being wide and matting down that, um, that hurl. It allows you to get right in there. And you can nip that out. If you want to throw some glue on your wraps before you put that whip finish in, you certainly can. But that is a pretty realistic looking little bug. Um, not a difficult tie. A little bit clunky up by the head in the beginning. But once you do a few of them, um, you will see that they're, they're not that tough. And uh, just a neat one to have in the box. Something a little bit different, like I say, to show the the fish that are, are getting lots of pressure or super clear water. Um, definitely worth worth a try and uh, it's a fun little tie. So that's kind of the old school, new school mix. Um, give it a try, fish it, let us know how it works for you. We know that will get your bobber dropping, no problem. So that's all there is to it. Thanks very much for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't. And until the next one, Cheers and tight lines.